In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you for coming to offer worship with me and joining others throughout the world doing the same. Today is Pentecost, the feast of the coming of the Holy Spirit. The service today has opened with a hymn, there'll be organ music at the end, and three other people will be leading parts of the Mass. As you probably know, I'm Father Michael. The curate here, Father Duncan, has worked hard with the technology to make this possible. I thank him and others who have contributed to the total effort. The service will be available from about 11 o'clock on YouTube. There are useful links on the church's website. Today's opening sentence. The love of God has been poured into our hearts by his spirit living in us. Alleluia. First, let us call to mind our sins, the times when we have quenched the spirit within our hearts and failed to follow God's will. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. Lord, have mercy. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. Christ, have mercy. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. Lord, have mercy. The God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, and as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fulfillment is a word I used when describing the ascension of Jesus. It can also be used for today, Pentecost, ten days later, as we celebrate the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus' followers. Pentecost is the final day of the Lent Easter period. You may remember that on the first Sunday of Lent, we read that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Now the Spirit comes to lead the church. We have come full circle. Fulfillment, yes but also something new. We hear in the Gospel reading how Jesus breathes on the disciples and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. It reminds us of the account of creation in which God breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of the man he had formed. Man, formed from dust, became a living being. In the room where the disciples are gathered on the evening of Easter Day, 
Jesus creates a new human family with a new life, his risen life. St. John's Gospel began with all things being made through the Word. Now it ends with the Word made flesh, making a new humanity, a community defined by having been given the Holy Spirit. Jesus immediately describes a consequence of receiving the Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Spirit gives discernment, showing us what is right and wrong. This is a huge responsibility, giving the Christian community a function that was associated with God alone. But God, through the Spirit, is present in the Christian community. Have we discharged this responsibility? Partly, yes. But often, forgiveness seems to be determined by our human assessments of right and wrong. We excuse and explain away the, feeling, the failings of people we like. We condemn those we don't like. Churches which enthusiastically proclaim God's forgiveness of sin do not always display his generous mercy in practice. They find sin where there is no sin. And in the other direction, the church can collude with the world, sanctioning behaviour which is sinful, failing to retain sins which should be condemned. Thank God for progress being made in ethical investment and there is more to do in many areas. Saint Peter realised that God was doing something new in sending the Holy Spirit upon the small group of disciples and subsequently on others. The first reading from the book of Acts describes the scene vividly. It was not the first coming of the Holy Spirit, plenty of that in the Old Testament and indeed in the Gospels, but it was a defining moment for the church and the world. We could see it as a fulfilment of Jesus's baptism. The Holy Spirit, who descended on him gently as a dove, now comes powerfully, wind and fire, upon his followers. Saint Peter sees it as a fulfilment of an Old Testament prophecy in the book of Joel. Joel, in just three chapters, describes the oppression of the Jewish people, both by an invasion of locusts and by foreign nations who were controlling Israel at the time. Maybe the locusts are a sort of parable for the enemy. We can think of a parallel with our present crisis. But Joel foresees a time when God will bless and deliver Israel. The blessing will be shown by God's gift of his spirit. The deliverance will come on the day of the Lord, the day of judgment, when Israel's foes will be defeated. Now, St. Peter adapts Joel's outlook. Joel almost certainly believed that the Spirit would be restricted to God's people, Israel. But for Peter, the Spirit being poured out on all flesh, as he says, means on all nations. Later in the book of Acts, the giving of the Holy Spirit to Gentiles is recognized and celebrated, admittedly after some debate. There is a deep symbolism in the Acts account of Pentecost. Divided tongues as of fire rest on each of the disciples. Then they are given the ability to speak in different tongues. The same word is used, though our translation uses the word languages. But all the tongues 
come from the same spirit. It is a sign that a divided humanity can be brought into unity through the action of God, who shares his power and his presence with all who come to him. In every age, the church has needed to find the right way to proclaim this message, to speak in a language, a tongue, that hearers understand. How we can proclaim the good news is a pressing question in the changed circumstances of the present. But, as always, people need to hear of God's love, know the victory over sin, God's forgiveness in their lives, and know they belong to the new creation of his family on earth and for all eternity. Amen. Let us now state our faith in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the church and the world and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you have given us the vision to dream dreams. Now through the Holy Spirit, may we show and share your gifts to all who will listen, look and learn. Help us to support each other in the task of mission, remembering your son's instructions in sending out his disciples. Breathe on us, gracious God, the wind and fire of your inspiration, so that we can be confident that you are with us and in us when we face difficult challenges. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. At this time, when churches and cathedrals are locked and empty, let us pray for our Bishop, Michael, and for his ministry. We pray that you may equip your church, this church, to do you, you justice and honour in worship and prayer, mission and pastoral care, especially in the present extraordinary circumstances. Let service to others be at the heart of our purpose, as it was for your Son. Strengthen us in our resolve to make a difference, to bring understanding and to trust your Holy Spirit to guide us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the parts of the world that are in turmoil at present, especially Syria, Libya, Hong Kong, Minneapolis and other American cities. May your peace be known there, your compassion shown there, your faith grown there. Help us to reach out and touch as your son would have done. We also pray for places and people affected by natural forces, exacerbated by humanity's selfish actions. 
Turn selfishness into selflessness, we ask. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In our own community, we pray for all those who have continued to do their jobs throughout the current crisis, and for all those who are now contemplating returning to do theirs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give, us, give a helping hand and a sign of hope, we ask, Lord, to the sick in mind, body, or spirit, remembering especially those in urgent need of our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died and ask that they now share the peace of your eternal kingdom, remembering especially David Holloway, John Farrington, Frederick Jones, and Margaret Seabridge, who have recently died. Bring comfort to those who remain, to those who mourn, and to those who find it difficult to grieve. Help them to shed tears, but also to let go, in the confidence that their loved ones are now with you. At this time, we also pray for those whose years and mind occurs. Dennis Hill, Mary Farron, Rene Coates, and Clem Mansfield. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. Joining our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Divine, and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen and ascended Lord be always with you. Lord, may the Spirit you promised lead us into all truth and reveal to us the full meaning of this sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And so we come to the liturgy of the sacrament in which we join our offering with Christ's offering of his body and his blood. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks, because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth, and uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells, to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. 
who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me therefore heavenly father we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension we look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of christ your son our lord great is the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke of the great things God had done. Alleluia. Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us rejoice with Mary, who was part of the community that gathered together after Jesus' resurrection. Mary, upon whom the Holy Spirit had brought about the conception of her Son. Joy to you, O Queen of Heaven. Alleluia. He whom you were meet to bear. Alleluia. As he promised, has arisen. Alleluia. Pour for us to God your prayer. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. O God, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have vouchsafed to give joy to the whole world. Grant, we beseech you, that helped by the prayers of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of eternal life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just a word before the dismissal comes to its end. I make no apology for drawing your attention to our difficult financial position, made worse by present circumstances. We cannot pass a plate round a virtual congregation, but our bank account and other details are available on the website. Please consider what you should be giving. Ask for advice if necessary. Thank you. There will be a Zoom meeting for conversation and fellowship at 11.15 this morning. Details of the links are in these, this week's bulletin available on the website. I hope you have a good week. Keep in touch. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.